Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning, and today my guest is Cecile Rayner, who is an Alexander Technique teacher in Brookline, Massachusetts. She's been teaching for over 20 years. She works with a wide variety of students, and she is also um, a mother, and we're going to talk today uh, a little bit about how the Alexander Technique can be useful for parents. Uh, Cecile, welcome to the show. Good afternoon, Robert. Good to talk to you again. Um, could you begin by giving our listeners a short description of the Alexander Technique? Yeah, um, the Alexander Technique is an um, efficient way to... Uh, reclaim postural balance um, by freeing ourselves from harmful habitual pattern mm -hmm. patterns, and um, it helps us uh, prevent body misuse and overuse. And it is done by teachers who use a gentle hands-on process. Um, of kinesthetic re-education that engages both the mind and the body. Well, you know, you mentioned um, um, body misuse, um, often, I guess, due to stress or strain. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I put that in my mind next to parenting, from my <laughs> own experience of that, which... Uh, it's it's pretty easy to see a connection there. Mm -hmm. um, Certainly, uh, I don't have any experience of parenting very small children, but I do have experience of teaching uh, slightly older children. Mm -hmm. And there are certainly times when your own physical, let's say your own physical mechanism is challenged mm -hmm. by, by the stresses uh, involved in parenting. So do you want to say a little bit about that, maybe based in part on your own experience as well? Yes. So there's several things I'd like to say about parenting. Some have to do with uh, when the children are very little. Mm -hmm. And they're they're they can't walk yet, and they're in a stroller, and 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 at and at some point they're trying to walk. So there's a, a few things I'd like to say about that, and then and then there's other things I can say in terms of children in general and older children, and how I mean I believe that parenting is really one of the hardest. Um, task anyone can do and it's it's something that no one can be prepared for no matter how many books you read no matter how how your parents were with you no matter mm -hmm. uh, it's really one of the hardest things so of course it's going to trigger all our habitual pattern and our reactive patterns and so uh, it is definitely the the one activity that if there's one activity you want to use your alexander it's parenting <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah. And uh, you mentioned um, very young children. Uh, obviously, one one of the things that you have to do with very young children is lift them and put them places and put them into car seats and so on. Yeah. And that's um, that can be quite a, a challenge physically. Yeah, it's very dem it can be very demanding on the body, but um, using the Alexander Technique makes a big difference. And um, uh, first of all, the mother, most mothers who haven't done the, the Alexander Technique, they will tend to carry children. They're going to have a favorite side because of the way they used themselves before, mm -hmm. and they're going to tend to use that side over and over, and they're going to develop what I call mother's hip. And which will end up coming with the foot um, turning out uh, on that side. And so sometimes I, I have a, st a student who come for the first time and I don't know them from anywhere, but I can I get a sense. I can get a sense if they've been a mother because there's certain things that you can notice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, it kind of deforms the body in a very specific way. So, so learning the technique would pr prevent that, um, and also, and it shows also where, how people push the stroller, for example. Um, if 
uh, somebody who hasn't had Alexander, you see them really efforting with their arms and shoulder to push the stroller. Mm -hmm. um, and so the whole body is very disconnected because it's too much tension in the neck, shoulder and arms. But what I tell my students, and I, and I use that also for people who, who don't have children, I say when you're in the grocery store, just relax your hand on the, on the ch cart bar and handle and start walking. Don't use your arms, do, use your whole body. Just by walking, the cart or the stroller becomes an extension of your body, and it's because you're walking that it's moving. Mm -hmm. And it's a total different way of using yourself, and it's way less stressful on the body. Um, so all those things, when parents are not aware of that, they create stress, um, unnecessary stress. It's stressful enough even <laughs> when you don't do that, but that's added stress, you know? Right. So, and and another way maybe of saying what you just did is that your arms if you're if you're pushing a a shopping cart <clears throat> or or stroller or for that matter a lawnmower for example mm -hmm. yeah. your your arms are really just conduits they're exactly. they're the connection between you and what you're pushing mm -hmm. but they themselves don't really have to do a lot of work no you're doing the work in your your torso and your legs by by mainly your legs by walking and i think that habit as you describe it people in supermarkets you'll see them clenching the shopping cart mm -hmm. um might not be such an awful thing if they're just in the store once or twice a week yeah but if they've got a small child mm -hmm. or two or and they're they're using a stroller then it can really start to catch up with them and you get as you as you would imagine stiff shoulders stiff necks a lot of tightness in their upper mm -hmm. body yeah 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 and the other thing i would like to mention in regard to young children is that sometimes um you know parents and grandparents try uh you know they're so excited they want the child to walk soon <laughs> and mm -hmm. they they're holding them by the hand and mm -hmm. they're much taller and they, and they think that that's going to help them to walk. And mm, right. this is this is really not a good idea to do that. First of all, it, there is a, a natural rhythm for each child to start walking when they're ready. And some children need more time than others. I, for one, and my sons were the same. We started walking at age 10. We were running all around. I mean, 10 months. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> and other other kids at 10 months, they're still sitting there or, you know, roll, you know, rolling over, whatever. So you cannot force a child. But on top of that, by holding their hands up like this, they're actually really creating a dis disconnect in the child that's trying to learn how to walk mm -hmm. um, and that uh, anybody who will hear this I hope they <laughs> um, they they stop doing it if they're doing it and and it's also the same when they're uh, um, crawling and they're trying to force them to go into walking before they're done with their crawling stage and I know studies have been done and they connect uh, the crawling stage to later on when kids will be reading and writing and so if you don't let kids have the time they need to go through all the de developmental stages you can actually affect their schooling their skills when they're going to be in school so mm -hmm. People don't know that, but I just felt like I needed to mention Yeah, that. absolutely. Crawling and creeping, those are mm -hmm. pretty important uh, developmental stages. And I'll tell you what I see a lot, and I imagine you do as well, uh, children who is, has, is walk, a child who is walking, but maybe quite young, mm -hmm. a few years old, uh, walking hand in hand with a parent who is a bit, the parent is a bit oblivious of how fast they're walking yes. for the short legs of the child. And I've seen mm -hmm. this a lot yes. where the child is really struggling to keep up. And I mm -hmm. think, again, um, a parent who's had some Alexander training would immediately be mm -hmm. sensitive to that. Yes, it's, it exactly. sort of jumps out at you when you see it as an Alexander t teacher. And I think a parent who had that kind of um, orientation would even sense it directly through their hands that this mm -hmm. kid is really struggling 
and of course creating all kinds of extra tension which is going to be associated with walking down the line so there i guess there's an example where it really really directly affects uh, uh your your children now if yeah go ahead you were yeah in. i want i want to mention another thing which is i know that with my first child uh, even though at the time I was already starting to meditate and, and um, you know, trying to learn what it means to be mindful in every possible way. It was the very beginning, uh, but I hadn't yet uh, integrated it enough that I was able to use it uh, when he was very little. And I remember walking to, I had uh, walking him to his daycare, and of course he he wanted to stop in front of every flower, every worm, every. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I remember being impatient because you know I had things to do. <laughs> right. And right. and uh, so um, I, the 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 Alexander Technique also develops a certain level of mindfulness and awareness and and ability to to be in the present moment. And I'm I'm so grateful that I studied this between my two kids <laughs> because I think I was way more like that for my second one. Um, <laughs> And uh, I wanted to mention that too. Um, right, right. Now, if we if we move on to to somewhat older children, yep. children who are perhaps in school, um, I, the the one thing uh, that I um, noticed right away um, was the really harmful effects of super heavy backpacks that kids were oh, wearing. Yeah, yeah. Um, just. Uh, it just amazed me. I would see kids because a lot of kids would walk by our house on the way to mm-hmm. school, and uh, they look like little tiny Sherpas, you know, trying, mm-hmm. about to climb Mount Everest. Gigantic packs on their back, and and the other thing that I can remember just jumping out at me right away was uh, the, the miserable furniture uh, seating arrangements mm-hmm. in, in school and in the cafeteria. So I think as a parent who had some Alexander um, training, uh, you probably, it would be a struggle to change those external things, but you could certainly be aware of them and help your help your children when they're at home, at least uh, to come out of whatever patterns they've acquired at school. That would be one thing you could do, or you might even be a, a voice for for change in that yeah yeah because you know it's it's uh it's also a symbol of how this culture puts all their eggs in the same basket which is the basket of the intellect (laughs) Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. you know they don't give enough uh awareness to the balance between body and mind and and yet they think they are because they are doing all the sports but then they do all the sports and it's competitive it's very muscular and they're still not really letting kids uh, be in tune with themselves you know So, so this is something that, uh, yeah, I, I had trouble with, but, um, but the thing is, you know, you can't, you know, by yourself, you can't change certain things, but, um, you know, like I tell people, you can't prevent the stress of life, but you can choose how you handle it. Right, and that right. makes the whole difference. So if you teach your kids that, then you're going to have kids that, you know, have a certain understanding of things, um, that sometimes they have to do things that are not comfortable or whatever. But in general, I mean, my, my younger one, my, the second one, um, I remember somehow between my meditation and my Alexander, little things happened that were quite uh, uh, interesting to show that they understand at a young age what I was doing. Um, one time, for example, my 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 son had had a teddy bear that got ripped at the neck, um, and he came to me and he says, "Mom, I think I think he needs Alexander." <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So he knew it had to, to do something with the neck, and and mm-hmm. and one time we went to a Chinese restaurant, and there were those. Um, uh, dragon or lion or I can't mm-hmm. remember mm-hmm. Uh, and their head was in their body there was no no neck and same thing my son went and he he says and he went with his two little hands he says mom don't you think he needs Alexander they need Alexander mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. and and so kids it, they pick it up but they they don't um, 
it takes a while, especially between parent and children. It's like you can't teach your spouse very well, you know, in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so with children, they're aware. And we've I've, I've had lots of Alexander moments with them. And it's only later that they ask for lessons and, and all that. I mm -hmm. Basically, when they grew up, it was th more by hearing me talk to students or, or friends or, um, you know, I didn't explain things to them when they were little, but somehow they picked it up. <laughs> mm -hmm. what, so. what I have found from some of my adult students, um, I, I te like most Alexander teachers, I, I show them the uh, Alexander lying down position, which mm -hmm. is basically lying on a firm surface with uh, some support under your head and your knees elevated, has all kinds of very, very useful uh, effects, and pretty anyone can do it. And uh, some of them uh, would would come home after work, for example, and lie down in, in the living room, and their kids would just lie down next to them. Wow. And... Um, so there, you know, there could be that kind of uh, uh, an Alexander transfer to to children. Yeah. I wonder if maybe in the in the in the few minutes we have left, might be worth saying a word or two about the stress of uh, teenage kids, because um, yeah. they do test you <laughs> in all kinds of ways. And uh, do you want to say a word or two about how the technique? can be helpful to a parent who's dealing with with that kind of thing? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that uh, when children become teenagers, um, it's, it is, um, I had heard a meditation teacher mention that um, if your teenager tells you they hate you and they yell at you and they, you know, you're doing the right thing <laughs> mm -hmm. because it's the time that they need to become separate from you. It's a time that they need to find their own identity. So understanding that is already a big thing. <clears throat> but then using the technique, uh, for me, it was just trying not to be reactive. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. um, and which allowed me to be more understanding because when you, you, you react, you react with all your uh, subconscious and unconscious fears and, and past history and 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 it's not necessarily you the way you would like to respond it's it just comes out of the the closet <laughs> mm -hmm. Boom. Right, right. Um, so when you use the technique and you choose not to react so you have that little space of time to give you a chance to respond the way you want to respond that makes a big difference and you not that you can you can only teach them by example. It's not something, you, you know, you can mention it here and there, you know, but basically it's by doing it yourself that they, they pick up on it. And, and, and kids in the same family can be very different um, and take to it sooner or later. <laughs> um, mm. You know, there's no guarantee, but the guarantee is that it's going to make the li your life as a parent much better much e e much easier and and you as a parent you can go through really stressful time uh with with a sense of um non-attachment you know like you mm -hmm. you don't take it personally mm -hmm. um and well, i i, I agree thing. with you that it's going to be mainly through example yeah they're going to they're going to see and sense I mean, kids see and sense everything, really. Oh, absolutely. And yeah. they're gonna, they're gonna, at some level, notice that you're remaining uh, fairly calm during this stressful, a stressful encounter. And at some level, they're going to pick up on that and perhaps model it down the road themselves. Yeah. 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 Is there anything else you want to say about parenting and uh, and the Alexander technique before we come to a close? No, except that I, I, you know, I would encourage any any parent or anyone who wants to become a parent to study the technique because they, they, it will change the directions of their lives. Um, uh, this is a work that even when even in other situation it can change people's life, but certainly as a parent, uh, it can really make a really huge difference. Um, so yeah well i would I would totally agree with that um so my my guest today has been Cecile Rayner, who's 
an Alexander Technique teacher and parent who lives in Brookline, Massachusetts. If what we've been talking about intrigues you and you live in the Boston area, we'll put a link to her website. If you live anywhere else in the world, we'll put a link to a website where you can find a teacher in your area and learn more about the Alexander Technique. Cecile, thanks so much for being on the show today. Thank you, Robert. It was a pleasure.